In this Did You Know Semiconductor video, we're going to talk about the decades of research and stunning engineering that have gone into creating today's cutting edge semiconductor chips from sand to the white gold. In the 21st century, sand has become more important than ever and in more ways than ever. In the digital age, the jobs that we work at, the entertainment we spend ourselves with, and the ways we communicate with one another are increasingly defined by the internet and the computers, tablets, smart TVs, and smartphones that connect us to it. None of this would be possible were not for sand. Over the past 70 years, people have done amazing things to turn this plentiful shiny rock into the century's most impact piece of technology. Let's see the largest exporters of electron-grade silicon. In 2011, the top four exporters of silicon are number four is Japan, number three Germany, and number two South Korea, and the number one is the United States. In 2011, U.S. leads in exporting silicon, that is electronic grade silicon, accounts for 28.5% and next comes with South Korea for 23.4% and then Japan and Chinese Taipei. In 2020, still the U.S. leads in exporting silicon, that is electronic grade silicon, accounts for 30.5% and next comes with Germany for 31.5% and in Japan and Malaysia. High-end electronics require high quality ingredients. The purest silicon is found in quartz rock and the purest quartz in the world comes from a quarry near spruce pine in North Carolina, US. Finding silicon is easy. It's one of the most abandoned elements in on head that makes up 90% of the earth's crust. In the remote hills of the Appalachian mountain lies what's considered the gold of today's day and age, the quartz, the white gold, the basis of the modern computer chip. Millions of the digital devices around the world, perhaps even the phone in your hand or the laptop in front of you, carry a piece of this small North Carolina town inside them. It does boggle the mind a bit to consider that inside a, nearly every cell phone and computer chip you will find quartz from spruce pine north carolina Covia Corporation. Covia, the larger export of quartz. In 2018, Unimin merged with Central to become a Covia Corporation. Covia produces a range of high purity quartz products that are used in the electronics industry, including the manufacture of semiconductors, photovoltaic cells, and fiber optics. First step in the process is converting sand to polysilicon. The Siemens process is currently the de facto standard in the production of polysilicon. Polysilicon, as the name implies, composed lots of small silicon crystals. Using the Sauralski, the ZZ or the float zone FZ process converted into single crystal silicon and then turns into a wafer. In this flow chart, we will take a quick look at the Siemens process. The step one, the silica sand powder is heated together with a carbon and an electronic furnace to 1800 degrees centigrade 
carbon pulls oxygen away from silicon dioxide it becomes carbon dioxide step two the silicon is grounded into fine powder mixed with hydrogen and chloride and heated at 300 degrees centigrade step three the above process also creates chlorides of unwanted elements such as iron aluminium boron phosphorus as a low boiling point of 31.8 degrees centigrade and the distillation is used to purify from the impurity highlights step four then there is a high purity chlorosilane is vaporized in hydrogen atmosphere at 1100 degrees centigrade for 2 or 300 hours, the reaction takes place inside large vacuum chambers and the silicon is deposited on to electrically heated thin polysilicon, which is a small green size silicon to produce high purity polysilicon, a dross of diameter of 150 to 200 mm. Solar grade silicon and electron grade silicon are the two types of the grades commonly used to characterize polysilicon. The purity of solar cell grade polysilicon is known as 6.9s, while the purity of electronic grade polysilicon is generally known as 11.9. That's pretty much used in making the semiconductor chips. Let's look at this Rolsky method. In short form, is a ZZ method. In 1916, Zorolsky, a Polish metrologist working in Berlin, published a way of making single metal crystals. The ZZ method was discovered accidentally instead of dipping the pen into ink wells, but he accidentally dipped into a crucible of molten tin and saw a tiny thread of a solidified tin hanging from the pan's nid. He soon verified that the thread was a single solid crystal. Let's see how this works. The step one is preparation of high purity molten silicon. The high purity silicon is encouraged to be used as a molten to form a single crystal silicon. A small piece of single crystal made known as a seed crystal will be dipped in the saturated molten silicon. The seed crystal will extract from the molten silicon and the rod will be pulled upward and rotated at the same time during this time. The next popular method is a float zone FZ method. A float zone silicon is a very pure silicon obtained by vertical zone melting. The process was developed by Bell Labs by Henry in 1955 as a modification of a method developed by William Gardner for germanium. The float zone process is used to form high quality single crystalline silicon. A single rod is suspended in organ gas and a localized molten region is created by radio frequency coil. As the coil moves down the length of the ingot, the molten region follows impurities and defects are preferentially segregated. And you look at this as the final single crystal silicon. Which is better for your specific silicon wafer needs? FZ or ZZ. The ZZ method is widely used for growing large single size crystals for a wide range of commercial and technological applications. One of the main advantages of ZZ method is a relatively high growth rate. In floating zone technique, that no crucible is necessary, which results in a high purity of the grown crystal. Once the crystals are made, now you need to cut them into wafers. This is nothing like a slicing up a sausage. First, you cut off the crystal's crown and tail that comes with the body sawed into different sections and ground down in ingots. Crystals are mostly grown larger than specific dimensions so that the extra needs to be ground down.
when reading or hearing about a semiconductor industry we often hear the term wafer but what exactly is so called wafer a wafer refers to the silicon wafer used in the fabrication of silicon semiconductor integrated circuits because of its circular shape it's called a wafer the leading silicon wafer suppliers in the semiconductor industry are both japanese companies one is shinichu and sumco and they both took a share the 60% of semiconductor wafer market the reason for this lion share is the legacy of the japanese companies once a thriving semiconductor industry through the 1980s where is general chemical companies like shinichu invested r and d down the best semiconductor materials for the domestic semiconductor firms the top supplier of silicon wafers in the world is shinichu a, J a japanese company Shinitsu in the company's name derives from the Shinitsu region where the company established the first chemical plant in 1926. Though the company today is headquartered in Tokyo, but it has manufacturing locations in the 14 countries worldwide. As the world's leading company providing silicon wafers for integral circuits, the Shinitsu group continues to be in the technological forefront with regard to cutting edge, large diameter, and super flat wafers. The next one is Sumco. It's a Japanese company that produces and sells silicon wafers for use in semiconductors. The company operates production facilities in Japan, the United States, South Korea, and Taiwan, and one of the largest producers of silicon wafers in the world. The industry produces the wafer in three general sizes, 150, 200, and 300 millimeters, about the size of a, a takeout pizza. Currently, the industry standard for wafers is 300 millimeters. The global semiconductor industry is going to take a major transition from producing 300 millimeter wafers to 450 millimeter wafers. Intel is a prime driver in the move to 450 millimeter wafer processing. It has announced its intent to run in the first line on a proven process IC design combination at the 50 nanometer node before moving to 11 nanometer once everything is proven capable of operating at this node properly it will be interesting to see how tsmc allocates wafers on its first 450 millimeter fab and how much it change charges for them tsmc is perhaps the most complicated uh, business case given its first 450 millimeter product will have to be a, a logic ic samsung's first 450 fab is expected to be a memory fab it's not certain whether this would be a for a DRAM or a flash. What comes next after silicon? Silicon is the king of the computing world. Then why are even looking for new materials to make semiconductor chips? There are two reasons for that. One, speed, and next one is the power consumption what materials will provide us the path beyond silicon to address these two requirements silicon and germanium ic's created the semiconductor industry the newcomers have to display silicon and germanium which means they cannot begin with a low yield extremely expensive products expect a long lead time before any of the new materials to turn up in your home computer Thank you. Thank you for watching this video.